Normally, it's the sharp position. So once it's open, the atmospheric pressure then pushes the liquid into the pipeline. And then uh, when all the liquids are empty, the controller must allow more air to go in for a few seconds. And it is the air that actually pushes the liquid forward to the next uh, stage. So this is also uh, uh, this summarized the four component uh, normal houses uh, connect to this sum here and the uh, vacuum chamber, the pipeline, the tank. Okay. Uh, sometimes you introduce a biofilter uh, just to uh, scrub the air so that you don't get any bad smell, especially for resort, uh, you may be dead. So this is also a, a typical animation of uh, how you see the vacuum, the wastewater gets in. Once it's full, it automatically pumps out and sent to the treatment plant. And when this, uh, when, when this, the, uh, sorry, this is, okay. So this just animate, uh, animate the pumping, and then more air comes in, and then it's swept up the air by this vacuum pump. So this is a, a typical uh, view for a system of about uh, 4,000 PV. Basically, you need uh, three pumps, uh, uh, gravity pumps. This discharge pump normally is one PV, one standby. This one 50 percent redundancy, and so on. We, we, we prefer two tanks, one for redundancy, and so on. So, uh, just as I mentioned, when the, the the first evacuation of the water actually gets into this lower part of the pipeline, the vacuum. Although it's a uh, four more or contour uh, on, on the same level, but it is actually in what we call saw to profile. So this one is actually about 100 meter. You have a little, uh, uh, a little, a little dip here. So your first part of liquid actually enter here. So when the second part comes in, this is pushed up front, and the, and the water, the water will follow there. Eventually, all this will come into the vacuum tank, it's like a train. Coaches of water getting in. I mean, you have water and air getting into the vacuum tank. So, when it's going uphill, you can actually, it actually goes like a staircase, you know. But of course, if you going downhill, you just follow the contour in a straight line. So, this is the, the way we design the. <coughs> but of course, uh, this is the only system that we introduce, uh, on, only system that uh, we, we think is a good idea. It's a simple, perhaps. Uh, so, what we we have every 100 meter uh, uh, inspection pipe. This, because with the inspection pipe, you can actually measure the pressure at any, any part of the line. Like in Brunei, uh, we have, uh, say, it's three kilometer long, and then you know, during the construction, this morning, you may finish your vacuum pipe. The next day, somebody cut off your pipe, and you wouldn't know. And then when you, when you, are, when you want to commission, then you realize, you know, you're leaking here, here, and there. And then, how do you detect where it's leak? So, this inspection pipe gives you a very convenient way. So every 100 meter, let's say you suspect it's a leak there, yeah? because you can actually measure it. Uh, what you probably do is we actually introduce a, a inflat uh, inflatable, inflat inflat uh, inflatable ball. And this is a ball, right? Attached behind is actually a hose. You can use a foot pump, so you let the vacuum suck in here and you let it, then you, you, you have a foot pump. So <coughs> if, if they say there's a, a leakage, here, so once the inflatable ball pass the leakage, uh, and then it, it, it seals up, then the pressure builds up, then you know, you just pull back half a meter, you know where it's a leak. So we have that inspection uh, pipe system. This is normally uh, also used in like, uh, like gas, uh, gas pattern projects. Uh, using. Okay, advantage, I think this, this one I'm going to have to explain. You can see uh, for environmental protection, this is, this will not have any infiltration and damage the contaminate the ground or something. So this just gives you an idea of uh, cost saving, especially you are allowed to put in the common trench. Uh, this uh, pipeline. And we're doing a resort. Uh, we have we have no land, so we have to put actually everything in the common trench. Uh, so this is an example of a job done in the Middle East. They put the storm water. Drinking water and sewage water. Because if the drinking water leaks and if the sewer pipe also leaks at the same time, what you do is 
it will suck the water in. It doesn't get up. Like okay, and also let's say if the leak, the things leak, uh, you will just suck out the air and eventually sort of uh, trick the system. Then you you have to go and fix up the problem. All right. So these are all the early detections uh, involved. So th you can also uh, the cost saving is actually in the replacement of a lot of this uh, collection. Uh, manhole. You can imagine every 80, 90 meters you have a manhole. In a very poor soil condition, you know, I tell you, even I pay $10,000 for a manhole, you, you still say it's too, can't be done. <laughs> you know? But whereas if you use a vacuum system, not only is it very shallow, uh, you actually don't need any of the manhole. Uh, except, of course, we have our inspection pipe, which you can actually build at the same time. So, so sometimes you have to go like a drain, a motion drain. So with the vacuum system, you can actually allow to go over it, or I mean, if it's too deep, you go under. So you have a choice of going over and under. You may have, say, a series of stickers like this. Uh, you can actually then change your profile design so to overcome all this uh, obstacle under underground. So, so you can also see. Uh, in fact, uh, actually one of the reasons that IWP asked me to bring this into the country also, at that time they were looking at the Malacca. I think mean, after they have done the studies, they say, Malacca, you know, uh, the whole part of Malacca, it can't be done except by vacuum, actually. Uh, if you want to redevelop that historical part of Malacca, uh, and, 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 and sewer, it, you know, it can't be done. Because imagine if you dig a hole like this, uh, all the 600 years of houses, uh, they all will collect uh, so sometimes uh, it is looking at that angle. Why we still able to sell vacuum systems to Africa? Imagine you know, they have their house is not very nice, but then why they use vacuum? It is actually a cost saving, right? You can see here, yeah, there's no heavy plant equipment. All these three men, they can actually take the trench like that, you know, they, I mean, they involve the community to do all the uh, zero work, right? You can see the job done. Huh? You see the houses are very, very primitive. Actually, one house, a few houses of first share collection uh, port. But you can see these are all done manually yeah, without any heavy plant. See, in the past, this is what they do. You know, they, have, they have to do, uh, they will bring in the equipment and they have to do uh, very, very deep excavations. So, there was like hard rock situation. This is the way they do. Soft ground, this is the way they do. Right? But then, after seeing this, uh, after the vacuum has been used, you can see all these are done uh, manually. And the time saving is, if it's a two year contract, uh, this can be done in half the time. That is the, uh, this was actually my project in uh, Maldives. Uh, uh, because it's an island, so we actually use, of course, I don't have the African or the Indian or whatever. We brought in actually a mini excavator. This is all done by mini excavator. But of course, you can see the water is very high. So what we do is we actually just have a few bricks uh, and put it up and we have we actually put all the services in one trench and then we, we, we backfill and then in fact uh, because it is um, up, it, the land is very little there is very little land and the specification from the architect is any tree is more than two inches you cannot cut. So actually we, actually this is a probably the strict to pass you see. It is actually made as snake just to avoid all the tree cutting. You have those uh, steps. Yeah, yeah. How accurate is it? It must be. Because you oh. control it very accurately. I mean, okay, we, of course, we, we do a control. We need a minimum minus 0 0.2% uh, fall. And then, so, and come to uh, every 100 meter. Then we introduce a lift. A lift depends on the diameter. Uh, generally, it's about 250 to 400 uh, jump. So, and of course, that is uh, provided it's a flat ground. But if the ground changes, so we actually then uh, design the lift uh, to match the, 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 the ground contour. Uh, also, with the bearing in mind that we want the minimum excavation. Let's say if you're going up the stairs, then you need to have a step K I and mean, then a step. So the length of course will be shortened to six meters. But if you have a, a gradual, uh, you can actually continue for one kilometer follow the same uh, direction, same same level. So that's a uh, slanting one. So vacuum station, you can actually use a very simple precast, uh, a precast container, or you can do something like that. That 
something that you can provide. Right? So you can actually also do like that by putting a tank underground. This is actually a biofilter. Uh, it looks like with substations. Uh, we have also a few types. We have we have we have designed this look like house. We also have designed this like substation. How big is that? Uh, all, actually, all depends on the size of it. Like the one we are doing in Brunei is uh, in Brunei is sixteen thousand pe. If it's a uh, translate in Malaysian term, we get more like five thousand pe. So that station is about thirty meter by thirty meter. But whereas if you this if you are doing this one, I tell you uh, four five meter maybe maybe depends whether if you need or sometimes you need a separation or uh, the road going over it. Yeah? So you can four meter setback, four meters setback, you know, four meters. So about twelve meter by. So uh, we Germany they like to have the tank and the pump inside the tank. But of course here this is the tank I use for my project in Macaui. This is how we design. This one also you have two version. If the ground water is very high, this is actually uh, not advisable. Even though it's made of steel, we can actually go. So we prefer then the tank to be inside the building. And that's why. If you go to see Puna, you see all my vacuum stations inside the building. But of course, we sun We have about two meter, one to two meter uh, building, sort of uh, lower, uh, sunken down below the, the ground level, uh, just to release the, I mean, to maximize the energy consumption. So this is also a project done here. In the, we are actually, you see, these pumps are the flat pumps, uh, N series. It is actually the latest model we use. Uh, this is also this is the, the vacuum pump. We generally tend to use a lot of 15 kilowatt power. Each will give you six, uh, 630. This pumps, uh, in fact, uh, we, we this is a push uh, oil cool pump. On top of that, we have actually a sensor all that, so you can. Uh, it's very safe, uh, lasts for a long time, and then we have the sensors that. You know, you can you can shut it if it's uh, if nobody say you put oil in it or whatever, it will shut by itself. Right? So it, it is very secure. So you can actually stack up uh, if you need to. These are just power filter. We, we, we it's our local design, local made. Okay, this as this is another generations of valve that we, we brought in. It's called the pinch valve. Uh, we use this now in Brunei because the water consumption is very high. Uh, Talking about 350 PE and one house about 6 PE. Uh, so you, you will appreciate why, uh, how, I mean, this is totally what uh, we use. We use uh, actually watertight uh, power. So even uh, like the project we involved in the night for a flat area, the condition is during the high tech and one in a hundred years, the whole place could be flooded and the vacuum system must still work when it's flooded. That is a chamber. Yeah. So, so this uh, collection chamber is made out of PT uh, materials. It uh, last is durable. Uh, also, we have uh, this provision that because we may have a lot of parking, people throw off or things like that. So we limit this to two inch. So anything bigger than that, you know, is left over here. So once a year, you just use pick up this lens and pick it up. You know, let's say you throw a, a water bottle, you can actually remove it. Doesn't get in because if it's if you ever sometimes soft the soft uh, the t-shirt, or you can if you can get into the systems, uh, we purposely make you can only find one, two, three, four spot here, which is a uh, ninety degree, right? So it's often uh, all these are quick release rubber coupler. We can quickly remove it. You can you shine the flashlight and see whether it's stuck in or not, and you can actually use a smaller pipe to pick it up. So maintenance is only confined in this area, but once you get into the main pipe area, because they are if they are in wide junction and the pipes actually from small increase to big and come to the station is actually bigger, about two hundred fifty. Uh, uh, so so there is no chance of parking when it's inside. How many how many units can go into one uh, collection chamber? We uh, generally spend 
Hosea Highway, and I'll spend around six hours to connect it to. 